Welcome to the Jaron Jarvis channel. I am Jaron Jarvis. Today, I would like to introduce to you, Lakeside Camping. Lakeside Camping. So my friends and I went camping this week with my friend's dad, who took time off work so we could go up early. We're trying to get some more fun in before school starts in a couple of weeks. We went up to the campsite and set up camp before jumping into swimming gear and heading to the lake shore. We were playing around, tossing a frisbee around the water, when Jake went to dive for a frisbee that flew too far. He went underwater and we all stood by, waiting for him to come up. After a long time, we all got confused in unison and started walking towards where he dove. A couple of us called his name Uncertainty. Moose panicked first and went into super lifeguard mode, flying through the water with a breaststroke until he got to where Jake had been. He looked around for a split second, then duff. We all kept moving towards them in the water. The surface hadn't even calmed before Moose emerged, pulling a flailing Jake out of the depths. We all sighed, but Jake wasn't having it. He was kicking and screaming and throwing punches. One caught Moose in the eye and he dropped Jake. They both went under for a second, then popped back up. Jake was whirling around, twisting back and forth in the water, looking for something where is it? He screamed, hands hovering just over the water. Moose re-emerged, a hand over his eye. To his credit, he didn't get mad. But he did keep his distance while the rest of us approached. Jake, you alright? Parker said where's it at? He replied, full-on panic in his voice the frisbee is in the water, dude, it's fine, I said. Let's just get to the beach. You okay? Not the frisbee, Jake spat. The thing that grabbed me. That would be me, moron, Moose called, massaging the left side of his face I heard it. It was calling my name. I heard it. That was us, Jake, we thought you were drowning, Mackay explained. Jake wasn't having any of it. He shook his head, still searching the water. He stumbled suddenly, but came back up immediately, stretching his arms out for balance. Moose saw it first holy shit. We all craned our necks, trying to see what they could. Moose walked near Jake and leaned back to counterbalance his leg. We all swam over to him to see why. There was a massive hole in the lake bed. It was so dark that it was visible as a black splotch under the surface. Visibility in the lake wasn't great, but it was clear enough to make out the beginnings of a circle that extended far away in either direction. Wow, that's some hole, Parker whistled, leaning forward as if it would give him a better view. None of us dared go over the edge. Moose put his feet on the edge, though wow, that's freezing, he said, toes wrapped around the circle. Jake had watched us get close, but stayed back. I saw his expression change as he stared at the dark circle of water. He was clearing water out of his ear while staring did you trip into this? I asked him. Everyone turned around. Jake nodded I think so. Some things. In there. Instinctively, we all turned back to the hole and backed up, despite his claim being ridiculous. The water was up to my neck out here and I got a sudden flash of fear that I'd be sucked in by a leg. Let's go back to the beach, Moose said, probably relying on some lifeguard instincts. We all waded through the water, using our arms to bounce along the sand until we hit the shallows. Parker's dad was chilling on the dock, feet in the water with a book in hand you guys ready to go already? He said, slipping a bookmark into place we got bored. Parker said before anyone else could. So, we loaded back into the car and went back to the campsite uphill from the lake. Parker and his dad started the fire while the rest of us peeled potatoes and cut meat into chunks. We had recovered from the lake incident and were all having a good time and laughing. Jake was trying to laugh, but it was obvious he was having a hard time keeping his morale. Moose was testing the tenderness of his face every so often and Jake kept sticking his finger in each ear and twisting aggressively, trying to get the last of the water out. After a while, as we waited for the fire to heat up, he stood up and turned his head to the side, shaking to get the water out you all right? Mackay asked him. We all turned to watch. He got embarrassed and turned red yeah, I'm just going to go to the bathroom. He grabbed that oil at paper off the table and walked toward the bathroom building back towards the campground entrance. 
We sat awkwardly until he was gone is he okay? Parker's dad asked yeah, he tripped in the water and had a scare, Moose said. Parker shot him a look, and his dad looked worried. Luckily, a log collapsed into coals, distracting him. With our help, he scooped our tinfoil wrapped meals under the coals and built a bed around them. We sat around and kept talking for a while. Every so often, we would glance off toward where the bathrooms were, but Jake didn't reappear until the food was ready. Parker offered to go look for him, but Moose said to just let him breathe for a while. He finally did come back, set the toilet paper on the table, and start eating with the rest of us. Most of us were done already when he started. By the time he finished, it was starting to get dark. Parker's dad brought out the gas lamps to keep the mosquitoes away while we huddled around the dying fire. No one dared ask Jake if he was all right in front of everyone. We all knew he hated attention. I hated to see him sit there and brood, and the mood of everyone stayed low too. We didn't want to get too cheerful and make him feel left out. It was a weird mood to balance. Finally, Parker's dad announced he was going to bed. That triggered the rest of us to get up as well. We were bored of catering the mood. I saw Moose pull Jake aside, but I went to my little one-man tent and climbed in. I undressed, got into my bag, and went to bed. I woke up to sobbing. Loud but distant crying. The sound made me jolt out of sleep, and I was wide awake by the time I recognized the sounds. Pulling on my clothes, I unzipped my tent and listened. The crying stopped, probably reacting to my zipper. But whoever it was couldn't stop themselves completely, and a sob escaped. The source of the sound became apparent when I saw someone standing in the trees near the table, hands cupped over their ears and bending over like they were in pain. I crawled out of my tent, stood up, and walked over. Was it Moose? Was his head worse than he'd let on? But, of course, it was Jake. He took one look at me and turned away, embarrassed your head hurting? I asked trying to sound friendly and not tired. I. The water in my ears. He broke down in sobs again do you need to go to the hospital? I said. He shook his head viciously. His expression hardened when I mentioned it. I don't need a hospital, he spat. Why? Do you think I'm crazy or something? No, God Jake, of course not. We're just worried about you, that's all. He muttered something and turned away, holding his head. I stood by awkwardly for a minute, not sure what to do. Should I wake up Parker's dad? Get him to lay down? Suddenly, Jake yelled and took off running into the trees. Jake. Jake. I yelled, taking off after him. I hoped my yell would wake the camp up. I didn't want to leave him alone in the woods in the middle of the night just to wake up Parker's dad for help. He kept yelling as he ran, and it took all my focus to keep up. It was all downhill and bushes would come out of nowhere from the darkness. I did a lot of last minute jumping and dodging. It was a miracle Jake wasn't hitting trees with how fast he was running. We crossed the road that wound up the hillside several times before I realized what he was doing. He was running back to the lake. I could see its calm surface reflecting starlight. The moon was behind the mountain we were on, not illuminating the valley. Jake! I yelled but he kept screaming, occasionally stumbling. Go away. He yelled. He emerged from the trees into the parking lot near the lake, and sped across the pavement. I tripped over something and slammed hard into the concrete. By the time I'd stood up, he was already wading into the water, disturbing the reflected stars. I got up and pursued him. Seeing the dock extending out over the water, I ran to it instead and used that to get me further out into the water. He was beyond the pier by the time I got there, but I used my momentum and turned it into a flying leap that landed only a few feet behind him. When I surfaced, he was already on top of me. His eyes were red and his face was contorted into the most hateful expression I've ever seen. He grabbed me by my shirt and began shoving me underwater. I tried to yell but ended up swallowing water. I tried to get my feet under me, but he kept shaking me, and the sand wouldn't let me dig my feet in. My lungs started to burn, and I flailed for air. I managed to claw one of his arms off of me, enough for me to put my feet down and put my head above the water. 
I got half a breath in before he shoved me down again. I felt his legs moving along the lake bed and realized in a flash of terror that he was dragging me further into the water. I kicked and struggled, occasionally getting up for air, but he kept pulling me. I lost track of time while I struggled, but eventually, I felt the ground give out under my feet. The water turned cold, and as my mouth struggled to breathe, I could taste the water turning sour. I immediately threw up and felt the puke rise around my face with the consistency of egg whites. There was nothing for me to kick off of down here. I felt Jake pushing me down further and further. The water grew colder. The burning in my lungs turned to aches. My limbs grew lethargic. I heard my name under the water. I couldn't tell which way was which, but it sounded like it was coming from down rather than up. It was soft at first, then the volume increased. The voice was muffled, the sound of bubbles accompanying it. I felt the bubbles brush my arms and legs. The underwater voice grew louder by proximity. Right in my ear, still muffled but understandable, I heard it. Please come here. Get back here, please. Come here. Come back. Come. Back. The tone turned from polite to insistive. It started to yell, hurting my ears. I had to cover my ears to keep them from hurting. As I closed my hands over my head, I felt my eardrum pop and water filled my ears, which made the voices even more clear. Come. Back. Get. Back. Here. It was like they only knew those few words. It just kept going, and I couldn't ignore it. I tried to swim for the surface, but felt like it became more difficult to continue with every stroke. I couldn't get up for air. Something grabbed me, and I tensed in response. I lost control of my limbs, they flailed on their own. I felt the grip harden, and I was yanked down with intense speed. My last cries left my mouth and I raised my arms to try and swim back to the surface. That's when I broke free into air, rasping and coughing on instinct. Parker's dad held me a ways out of the water, standing on the lake bed while keeping me above the surface. Moose was pulling an unconscious Jake toward the shore. I only caught a glimpse before I puked again. The taste of the water was overcome by the taste of bile which was preferable. Parker's dad took me back to shore, holding me out of the water like a toddler and letting me cough up water every few feet. Moose was performing CPR on Jake when we got to the beach. Mackay was holding a cell phone and talking to 911. It took a couple of minutes, but Jake did come around, thankfully. He coughed up water and still held his head. An ambulance arrived and took Jake and I away. Moose came with to contact our parents. Parker's dad stayed behind so he could pack up the campsite and drive Mackay and Parker home. I don't remember much of the ambulance ride. My ears were ringing and I had a hard time getting the water out of my ears, though. Every few minutes, my ear still pops and my hearing devolves into a liquid atmosphere. Everything around me becomes muffled, like I'm listening to it from underwater. No matter what I do, I can't get it out of my ears. It comes and goes as it pleases. The muffling sensation is so oppressive that I can't pay attention to the doctors or my parents when they talk to me. Moose and Parker and Mackay have come to see me. It took so much energy and focus to pay attention to them through the liquid haze. Apparently Jake stabbed a nurse with his foreneedle and has to be strapped down. No one knows what's wrong with him. But I do. I know what's wrong. When the liquid gets really oppressive and drowns out all other noise, I can still hear them. The voices. Come back. Come here. Please come back. It's only a matter of time until the voices get more insistent. Judging by Jake's reaction, I won't be able to resist.